These buses that you see behind me will be hitting the roads very soon. I'm standing in front of one of 200 recycle bins, and you can't help but notice them all throughout the fair. And you can make all kinds of cool stuff with recyclable items. Check out this T-shirt and this tote bag. It took five plastic bottles to make this T-shirt, so now we get a chance to see the fruits of recycling with these pretty cool items. Reporting live from the State Fair, Demetria Connor, ABC News Channel 20. Today's family, friends, and the Department of Defense honored these soldiers at Camp Lincoln in Springfield. Indeed, it was another exciting year of the Twilight Parade, and the people turned out in numbers to experience the fun. Officials say jet skis have become a big problem, from inexperienced drivers to high speeds. They say you should use common sense and safety precautions, such as making sure that you are a good distance away from other boats. We're told to make sure we have emergency kits and a disaster plan. But what about our pets? The celebration is winding down and now they're preparing for a check presentation to the Sherman and Williamsville Fire Department for their assistance during the tornado that ripped through the small village last year. Williamsville Mayor Tom Yokely says residents wanted this festival to be a day of remembrance, a celebration of restoration, and a day of thanks to everyone everyone that helped restore this community. You're looking at a village that's celebrating recovery after the storm. The community spirit is just amazing. From the booth to the food, these Williamsville residents are reflecting on how far they've come from this time last year when a tornado damaged homes, businesses, and a church. Life wasn't lost, you know, and just, just homes, but every, the fear of the community getting back together is really good. Pastor David Beals of the Williamsville Christian Church Church says it's been 13 months of figuring out where to start and how to rebuild. The tornado ripped through his church, and now the congregation is in the process of starting over at this new site on South Old Route 66. The feeling of arms up in the air is where are we going to go, what are we going to do? And but the community rallied together and poured out their hearts and pockets to help. How can we help? How can we help? But it was... It was devastating, especially the church. Oh, my God. Pastor Beal says he doesn't know where he or his congregation would be if it were not for the community support. Because we wouldn't be where we are 13 months later if it hadn't been for all the, you know, the villages pulled together and helped us out and, and just all the different people. A village where everybody knows everybody and has each other's back. The small community. Everybody's pitched in. Everybody's just helping each other out. The new places that are going up, the older places that got damaged and are going back up. And even with a setback, residents say their village is still standing. And the pastor hopes that at least the framing of the building will be up within the next few months. But from the looks of it, it looks like it will be a while before the doors of the new church are open. February was the slated completion month, but there was a setback. For now, the church is meeting in the old Williamsville Junior High School. Reporting live in Williamsville, Demetria Connor, ABC News Channel 20. Elizabeth, I'm in front of the local 137 Plumbers and Steam Fitters. This group alone had over 100 supporters in the parade, and there were several other unions that were in full force, as they are every year, to celebrate and to continue to fight for their rights. The streets of downtown Springfield were packed with laborers, all walking for one cause, unity amongst the laborers, and to show Springfield they have a stake in this city. And that's what built our country, and that's what's going to continue to build our country. Without these people, there wouldn't be any of this. The unions are watching the governor's race very closely. This group of plumbers, pipe, and refrigeration fitters has already endorsed Governor Flynn. I'm looking for a guy that will be honest to labor, make sure working men and women of the state of Illinois get a fair shake, get a good wage, good benefits, and move on from there. And the masses came out in these lime green shirts. All 500 of them representing laborers, local 477, and carpenters. And while the group haven't endorsed a candidate yet, members say they definitely want someone that supports organized labor. We look out for our pension. 
you know, insurance, stuff like that. So we need somebody that wants to help sponsor us and have our best interest at heart. Now, some parade supporters noticed that there were no city officials visible and very few political candidates. Now, some were very disappointed and felt that the officials and the candidates didn't think the parade was important. But nonetheless, the unions had a strong showing today, and they say a strong voice in this upcoming election. Andrew, you could see people lined up for miles away to show their respect to this fallen soldier. It was indeed an honorable transfer of President playing soldier, Staff Sergeant Joshua Powell. The plane landed and the tears began to fall as family members and supporters watched as Sergeant Joshua Powell's remains were transferred to the Capitol Airport, bringing home a soldier that gave his all in combat. The Army's lost a fine young man. With all the tears and the grief, Pride and honor were still the strongest emotions. The family has suffered a great loss, but they can take comfort in the fact that that uh, they they gave their son to their nation, and uh, and that their son gave his all. This orchestrated event has been a tradition for fallen soldiers. Powell's body was escorted from Dover Air Force Base in Maryland, and then put on a chartered flight to Springfield. A lot of people care what's happened. Supporters like Chad Curry turned out in numbers to show their respect. Curry says he works with Powell's mother and says the Pleasant Plains community is mourning. Well, people are very sad and feel for his family. Very thankful for what he's done for our country. You take care of their family. A devastating blow to Diana Nevich and her family. He was to be my niece's best man in the wedding in March. She says his death has hit too close to home. He means a lot to us. Our son is serving in Afghanistan, and he sends his condolences from Afghanistan to their family. There's a saying in the Army that says that we never leave a fallen comrade behind, and I think uh, this ceremony like this shows that. And these supporters will never forget his memory. The procession left the air facility and headed down Veterans Parkway to Cokey Mill Road. Powell served with the U.S. Army since June 2005. He was a Black Hawk helicopter crew chief in the 101st Airborne Division.